Well, again, uh, good afternoon and welcome to the world famous Indianapolis Motor Speedway on a very special day in the history of this great facility, also in the history of Penske Entertainment. Uh, before we get started, a uh, quick housekeeping note. For those of you joining us in person, welcome to you folks. There is a standing microphone located to your left once we get through the presentation. <laughs> we'll take a, uh, some questions and answers after that. And uh, if you're joining us virtually as well, welcome to you folks. Go ahead and hit the virtual raised hand button to let us know that uh, you have a question later on or throw one in the chat as well, and we will pass it along here before the afternoon is done. Well, join us today. Uh, you know it's a big deal when the governor of Indiana is here uh, joining us. So uh, it is great to welcome back uh, Governor Eric Holcomb to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Welcome, Governor. He's the Chief Technology Officer and Group President, Solutions Businesses, Bridgestone Americas. Uh, say hello to uh, Nazar Trigi. Nazar, welcome. And let's begin with the President and CEO of Penske Entertainment Corporation. We'll start with Mark Miles. Hi, Mark. Hey. Good afternoon. Thanks, Dave. It is a big day. It's a very big day that we've been working on for uh, really more than two years. And here, getting ready for May to fully bloom is the right time to begin talking about these initiatives. Today, we're announcing a robust and innovative lineup of environmental impact initiatives, which will dramatically decrease the carbon footprint for this year's Indy 500, presented by Gamebridge, and significantly boost sustainability efforts within the sport of IndyCar. These steps are the latest and most comprehensive elements of a long-term strategy for the organization that's been developed over the last two years and more and are possible through great coordination with our expert partners. For more than 100 years, IMS and eventually IndyCar have been all about moving forward, about progress. IMS has been an incubator for new technology and a place where history is made. Innovation is in our DNA. So is caring about our community and the world around us. So it's fitting that we're gathered here on Earth Day to discuss this effort to affect change across our sport. Looking backwards, our work in sustainability, I don't really know when it began, but I do remember that we introduced E85 in 2012 as the race fuel for IndyCar racing. And in the past two years, we've sharpened our focus on sustainability much further. We've inventoried our venue here at IMS and advanced sustainability initiatives through many of our renovations at IMS, the, mo the much publicized renovations to our restrooms and other parts of this facility, gave us the opportunity to, uh, to look at our use of energy, water efficiency, to begin converting to LED lighting and water conserving faucets, electric hand drivers, and all the other things that ended up uh, really contributing to our sustainability in, in those respects. In 2021, we worked with our, elec our electric utility provider to source renewable energy. All these efforts led to the place where we received from the Council for Responsible Sport their silver certification for last year's Indy 500. But looking forward, beginning on, in the run-up to this May, there's much more, which is really what we're here to talk about today. Here are some of those initiatives. IMS, IMS, working with Shell and climate technology company Choose, will launch a new consumer program which will allow our fans to offset their travel to the 2023 Indy 500 through a voluntary and nominal contribution to the Green Trees Reforestation Project. IMS will offset our entire operational carbon footprint through a contribution to green trees as well. And green trees, by the way, is a shell initiative that restores natural habitats in more than a million acres across seven states in the Mississippi Alluvial Valley. We're also expanding recycling and waste recovery efforts here, working with our concessionaires and with Gleaners Food Bank so that food which still uh, uh, can be consumed by people, will be saved, and will be uh, redistributed. Legends, our merchandise licensee, came up with the idea to bring us a sustainable mobile merchandise store that will come to us via an electric vehicle truck and that will sell shirts and other merchandise made from recycled post-consumer plastics. Who would have thought that we'd be wearing souvenir shirts 
that were made from plastic bottles and that will save six bottles per shirt and one kilowatt hour of electricity per shirt and two gallons of water. So we hope people will belly up and buy. Really interestingly, in a little while after this media conference, we'll go outside and, and see it. All Firestone tires for Indy 500 practice, qualifications, and race day will be delivered here to the racing capital of the world from Firestone Central Indiana Warehousing uh, Center using Freightliner's eCascadia trucks from Penske Truck Leasing's fleet of electric vehicles. So fully electric trucks will pull the trailers that will deliver all the tires to, uh, to us for May. To assist in this effort, we have uh, installed a new 150 kilowatt high power electric charger on the grounds just on the east side of the Indianapolis uh, uh, Motor Speedway Museum. And this was possible through the support of the IEDC, the state, and through Shell Recharge Solutions. We're excited about that. I think it's a sensational symbol about our commitment to uh, clean energy going forward and to talk a little bit more about his perspective on it. It's a pleasure to welcome and introduce Governor Holcomb. Well, um, thank you, Mark, and congratulations on that long list of commitments. And uh, I thought I had seen every creative T-shirt <laughs> out here in my life, but uh, add, add one more um, to, the, to the list. It's also good to be back. Um, at the track twice, twice in one week. I must be living right. It's not even May, but if you make me an offer for tomorrow, I'll see you tomorrow <laughs> out here as well. And as, as Mark um, mentioned, obviously the IMS has had a, a long standing tradition of not just what they do here, but also putting Indiana, not just on a map, but really on the world atlas as a leader in, in so many respects ever since that first test lap. Uh, would have been run over a over a century ago, and my how far we 've come in a century since that very day this place has become synonymous with you mentioned innovation, and I would add to that speed and teamwork and competition and winning and you just described a, a winning agenda uh, for the state of Indiana and for indeed the the world and it 's because of your kind of collaborative pursuit of progress um, that we mark yet another team victory and we add sustainability to that long list of descriptions that um, really do illustrate what this place is and what it means uh, to, our, to our state and to the sport. And it falls right in line, as Mark said, um, with the state's commitments to be a real leader in the energy transition space. And you don't have to look very far for other examples of that because like a good tire, we, we need to be well balanced. <laughs> and, and our portfolio needs to, to illustrate that. And so we're out seeking to cultivate the sun and we're out seeking to be a leader in harnessing the wind and developing hydro's blue energy and, and engine um, sources. We're, we're out to be a leader in producing electric vehicles and mapping out a statewide strategy to charge them. We're out to convert our roads into smart roads where you can actually be charging your vehicle as you're, as you're driving it and pursuing um, battery technology and the recycling industry that will surely follow. We, we hosted an autonomous challenge here not too long ago. Uh, and and uh, with some impressive results that we got from that. And now today, as you um, uh, mark the, uh, you know, deploying electric vehicles that are going to be delivering these um, renewable rubber racing tires, um, just when you think you'd seen it or heard it all, uh, here's one more thing that's that's happening here at the track here in Indianapolis, Indiana. So. In just 37 days, all the eyes of the world are going to be on this track, and they're going to appropriately so see the green flag. And I think the green flag now has a couple different uh, meanings as we all go green and we go there fast. And so I'm just so proud to stand with industry leaders like Team Penske and like Bridgestone, Firestone, and Shell as we all come together to collaborate so that we can 
celebrate the, the greatest, greenest, sustainable spectacle in racing ever. Congratulations, Mark. Thank you. I got to say, I just love these gubernatorial metaphors. <laughs> just roll off the tongue. They're things of beauty. So look, we, we're going to go see this truck, the electric truck, um, the e Cascadia truck from, from Penske Truck Leasing in a minute. But Firestone isn't done there. They've been working for some time on really the tire of the future, a green tire. And so it's, it's really, really exciting, Nazar, to have you here and to give you the opportunity to tell uh, everybody assembled here in the racing world and people beyond what's in store for race tires for IndyCar. Yes, thank you. And uh, uh, Governor, I love the uh, analogy on tires. So thank you for the plug. Uh, so uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm delighted uh, to be here today, uh, and I'm excited about the 106th running of the Indianapolis 500. It's one of my favorite events of the year. On behalf of Bridgestone and Firestone, we're honored to be part of this really exciting uh, announcement uh, on, Earth, on Earth Day. We are proud to partner with Penske and with Shell to deliver the most sustainable month of uh, May in the history of racing. Sustainability is really uh, at the heart of everything that we do uh, at Fridgestone. And it has been in our DNA from the beginning. Uh, it's also the purpose behind our vision to become the world's leading sustainable solution company. We have recently announced uh, the Bridgestone E8 commitment, establishing eight values uh, to solidify Bridgestone's commitment to a more sustainable world. These E8 commitment really connect to every aspect uh, of our business and guide all our decisions throughout the development and delivery of our products, our services, and our uh, solutions. And of course, like uh, our partners at Penske and Shell, we have set clear and very ambitious uh, sustainability goals. We have committed to a full carbon neutrality and to delivering tire from 100% renewable materials by 2050, which is really what brings the announcement that we're going to share today. In 2011, Bridgestone launched an initiative to diversify the world of natural rubber supply and re reduce its carbon uh, footprint. As you can imagine, natural rubber is a critical material for the proper functionality of tires as it has unique properties that really we have not yet duplicated or replicated in the synthetic rubbers that's, that's available. In fact, certain performance, such as durability or resilience to heat in demanding applications such as racing, can only be achieved through the use of natural rubber. And currently, 90% of this world natural rubber really comes from one species of tree in one small region of the world. Basically, it's called the Havea rubber tree, and they mainly grow in the South uh, East Asia. So you can imagine the challenge we would face if these precious trees are affected by disease or climate change, or if we experience any major disruption to the supply chain from this region of the world. Which is exactly what we have been trying to solve, really solving this problem. And this is where the Waioli uh, comes into the picture. And I think there are a few shrubs here. So I'm sure nobody is familiar with the uh, Waioli. And I'm going to make the introduction today. Are they still here? Are there plants right here? Yeah. Oh, they're outside. Oh, they're yeah, outside. They're so we'll, we're going to see them outside. Uh, and Waioli is, is a shrub that grows naturally in the Chihuahuan Desert and several parts in the southwest of the United States. It is a shrub that produces rubber in the bark of the stem, branches, uh, and the roots of, the, of this shrub. And what makes it so special is that the natural rubber that it produces is chemically identical to the rubber that comes from the Havea trees in South, uh, Southeast Asia. Also, since it is a, a desert shrub, we only require really very little water to grow compared to like popular crop like cotton and alfalfa, which makes it also value a viable alternative crop to grow in places like Arizona and California that are now facing persistent multi-year droughts and really they need to figure out an alternative. 
You can see that we're really excited about the potential of Waioli as an alternative and sustainable source of natural rubber. And its potential to reduce our carbon footprint by localizing production of a, really a key raw material for us. We use quite a bit of uh, natural rubber in our productions. And therefore, we are thrilled to announce today that we will be debuting this new sustainable material for the first time in Indy 500 uh, during the pit stop challenge. And that we will be using these tires in, uh, in actually during competition at the Music Hall a Grand Prix in Nashville uh, later in August. Mm. We believe it's only fitting that the next generation in sustainable tire performance debuts at Indy as a part of the greatest spectacle in racing. Actually, for more than a century, Firestone really have used this extreme condition of open wheel uh, racing as the proving ground for advanced technology for our materials and our tires. In Indianapolis Speedway, we, were, we tested many revolutionary uh, innovation over the years that we brought to market, including uh, non-skid thread, uh, nylon cord, to, to name a few. In Waiuli, uh, natural rubber will f follow the same path. So Bridgestone is uh, working to fully commercialize a Waiuli natural rubber in all its attires by 2030. By doing this, we'll be creating a new domestic industry and sustaining agricultural jobs in areas of the U.S. that have been hit hardest by the global climate and weather pattern changes. We believe delivering sustainable innovation require collaboration and partnership between community, businesses, federal and regional uh, agencies, and across the entire value chain, which is why we're thrilled uh, to stand uh, along the leaders in our industry and commit to a, uh, making mobility more sustainable. Thank you to the Penske team for partnering with us to incorporate sustainability into the month of May and in, in, in the Indy 500. We believe together we can reduce the impact of motorsport on the environment, ensuring fans can enjoy the thrills of racing for many generations to come. Thank you for the opportunity to join you today and for allowing me to share a little bit about our exciting sustainability journey at Bridgestone and Firestone. And I'll hand it back to Mark. Thank you. Thank you. That is really amazing. And if you're a race fan, I think I can distill all that down beyond the really important global implications from a sustainability point of view and ultimately uh, for consumers, I'm sure. But for race fans, what we know is the alternate tire, the red, is going to become literally green. green. Mm -hmm. So you'll see that in the pit stop challenge here in May, and then you'll see it on the track in competition uh, at, in Nashville. So uh, we're going to have to retrain our commentators to talk about <laughs> the, the tire strategy and the, the blacks and the greens. Two things el that I also want to just mention, uh, and one of them is news. The, the one that isn't is I see Jay Fry in the back of the room the incredible amount of work that Jay and his team of engineers and Chevy and Honda and, and really all of our suppliers are doing to deliver the uh, IndyCar hybrid motor uh, for racing in the 2024 season. We won't talk much more about this now, but an incredible amount of investment and work is going into that, and it'll really make a difference in our, our profile and in our racing for the 2024 season. The last bit of news from a sustainability point of view is actually big news and that is that after May for the rest of the beginning for the rest of this season starting with Detroit um, all of the IndyCar race cars will be delivered to the races on our race weekends using renewable diesel fuel so we don't have available to us and the ability to charge sufficient number of electric trucks but we can send our our race cars to uh, to the races each weekend after May uh, where the trucks that, that haul them uh, are powered by renewable diesel. And this is, uh, this is a terrific development from, a, from an environmental point of view. So we're very pleased with that. So we, we may have uh, lulled you into uh, a glass-eyed state by trying to give you a number of, of uh, what we think are important uh, sustainability initiatives at one time. You'll see much more about them over the course of May. And uh, after we take questions, Dave, I guess we'll go out and we'll, 
I don't know if we're going to see a green tire, but at least we'll see the truck that's going to get the uh, the other tires here for the rest of May. Yeah, uh, tremendously important news, no question about it. Uh, again, we're going to open it up for Q&A here, and then for those of you joining us virtually, uh, you'll get your turn here uh, in just a matter of minutes. But I'm going to put on my reporter hat real quickly. How the, tell us a little bit more about the green tire. How did that come to fruition? How did that really begin? So it's actually, I think it was a discussion with the Mark and team, and we were thinking, how do we partner on this initiative, and how do we bring a lot of the innovation that both company, Penske company and Bridgestone are doing? And we thought, really, the racing platform, this platform that we both enjoy tremendously, and we support and we're committed to, could be a great display of kind of the technology and the innovation in this space. And we collaborated on this, and we have amazing team on both sides. We made it happen. Yeah, that's very cool. Very cool. Go ahead. We'll we'll start with uh, Nathan from the Indianapolis Star. Go ahead, Nathan. Hey guys, um, either for Mark or Unizar, um, the new green tire. Does it? I know you guys are using it as an alternate tire. Does it essentially? Um, operate the same as the uh, the alternate tires that we've been used to in terms of you know how it interacts with the track, the materials, um, so on and so forth. Actually, to be honest, we would show the alternative. We could have placed it on either because, as I mentioned, the material is exactly on a chemical level, almost exactly the same. Processability is slightly different, so we're making changes in our manufacturing process. But the property of the material, uh, the the feel of the vehicle, we believe, is going to be identical, and we're doing a lot of testing uh, with a uh, lot of the drivers to ensure that they don't feel a difference. A clarifying question for Mark. Is this going to be the alternate tire that teams will use from the Nashville race on in perpetuity? Uh, it, it is an alter the alternative to the Reds, as we know it today. It will debut in racing in the race itself in Nashville. We don't have a schedule yet for subsequent races, but ultimately it will be the, the successor to the Reds. Um, you had mentioned, and I know it was also in the, the press release, about the goal of becoming the first responsible sports certified venue. Um, Mark, can you kind of maybe explain a little bit about what that means and what it takes to get to that point to be recognized with that? Yes, yeah, so this is a, a, a recognition from an organization that many of our partners are involved with. It's really, I think, a leader in pushing and uh, promoting and encouraging sustainability called the uh, Council for Sustainable Sport. Um, frankly, our partner Shell kind of introduced us to this and helped us develop this, uh, this focus. There's a very long list of metrics which you check the box or you don't and it ends up with a score and you either get a certain level of certification or you don't. So we went through that for the Indy 500 in 2021. This year we hope to achieve a, achieve a comparable certification uh, for IMS, for the venue itself, which of course is a broader, bigger uh, footprint and, and uh, challenge. So that's what we're doing. We're, we're looking th through the things that we've talked about today and, and others at ways to uh, check more boxes which is maybe not the right way to say really make a difference in reducing our carbon footprint and thereby earning um, this recognition. And last one also for Mark. With all of these changes you guys have instituted today and over the years, where does all of this position um, you guys in terms of IMS as a venue for um, potentially reaching uh, carbon neutrality at some point down the line? Well, I would say for IMS as a venue, you know, this is a challenge. It's a venerable, vast place, tougher than, say, a 17,000-foot or uh, seat basketball venue. Um, but we aim to be at least the leader in motorsports in terms of this venue, and I, I feel very confident if we don't have that designation already, we'll, we, we'll be earning it immediately. Um, and I really feel the same way for IndyCar. You didn't ask about IndyCar, but I think the series – uh, will take its place as we implement these and other measures um, as a leader in motorsports and, and I think get a lot of recognition in sports in general. Thanks. Thanks, Nathan. Let's uh, try one virtually. Ben Johnson from the Paddock Eye has been patiently waiting. Ben, go ahead, sir. Cheers, Dave. Um, it's a question for all three of you guys. How big um, is this announcement today in terms of 
the future of not just IndyCar, but from a state level governor going forward in other industries as well? Yeah, I, I think uh, not only is it an example um, but it's it's inspiring to to see the the real commitment, the setting goals, the taking the steps, and then measuring along the way. We have so many uh, exciting examples in other industries as well, be it in manufacturing, auto production, or agriculture, who are making very similar um, investments. And it's just proof positive um, that this commitment uh, through innovation. And, and with that will come a lot of competition to keep up with the leader in reducing your carbon footprint uh, and making your way toward um, recycling and reusing and, and how that reduces and gets you to zero emissions. So this is kind of another planting a flag in the ground saying we're doing it and it's happening all over our state. And for a state like Indiana, who's per capita the number one state in manufacturing in the country, this is a big, darn deal. I would just say there's more to it also than what we've talked about today. We are heavily engaged in doing all the necessary things to be a leader in this, in this sustainability space. So we mentioned the fact that we, we, we could calculate with the help of outside experts our, our carbon uh, footprint, our inventory. Um, for the race last year. We're continuing to stay on that. We'll look at it again for this year. We'll look at the whole of the venue for this year. And we'll, we, will, we hope to have a handle on the carbon footprint for our immediate involvement in IndyCar throughout the, the, a year. And then the next step is to broaden and to begin to work with our race promoters and with our team owners and to look at their operations and to see how collectively we can go further and throughout the whole kind of ecosystem of the sport we can be more and more responsible and more and more a leader uh, not just in motorsports but in setting examples for sustainability if i may add uh, to that um, as one of uh, a company that's actually a leader used to be called the number one tire company in the world and we're really moving from the number one tire company of the world to we want to be the, the sustainable solution company in the world. It's really we reached a point of no return. Uh, industries, government, I think we're all realizing that this is, Earth is something that the next uh, future generation has entrusted in us, and it's something that we need to maintain uh, for future generation. And for us, for example, I think the government talked about recycle. Uh, we have established a platform that actually we call it the 4R, which is really about reducing, reusing, recycling, and renewing. Renewing is the last stage where you actually take the material that you have, like the example of the shirt, maybe that's a, a, a reuse application, but renews uh, is where we actually want to take some of the material that we create and turn them back into raw material that we can bring for full circularity. So this is really an exciting stage that uh, I think more uh, leaders in the industry have now realized this is the path forward and we need to look at it very holistically. More just manufacturing, selling, we have to own the value chain and bring that material back for full circularity. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Ben. Let's go ahead, uh, one more in person. Hi guys, Eric Berman at WIBC. Mark, a couple of questions for you. Um, the uh, it, you had some statistics on the uh, recycled material for the shirts. Do you have similar statistics on the overall impact that uh, the various changes you've outlined? How much of an impact that will have, or is that part of the carbon footprint uh, discussion that you were just alluding to? We we I can't give you a projected reduction based on these uh, initiatives for this year. Mm -hmm. But we have estimated what the, uh, the footprint will look like. And it's based on that that we're making the investment for what we can't reduce immediately to offset through the purchase of, of these credits. So um, we, we think we'll, we, we will be offsetting something like, I should get this number correct. Uh, where's Logan? He can help me here. What's our number? 
500 tons of carbon uh, this year. Secondly, I wonder if you could elaborate on the uh, the Green Trees Initiative. How, from the fans' perspective, how is that going to work? Is that a surcharge on their purchase for next year? And so when we get to the renewal period, which everybody in Indiana knows starts immediately with the checkered flag <laughs> and goes for 500 hours after the checkered <laughs> flag, at that point, as you go online to buy your tickets to renew for the for the 2023 race, you get through with the transaction and you'll be able to, you'll get to the place where you can find this choose option. And it's, it's very simple and there'll be a, I think it's a pretty nominal number. And that will be a contribution you're making toward the, the choose uh, offset. And so it, it isn't a precise calculation because there are differences whether you're coming from Carmel or uh, Carmel. Um, but we've just chosen a number where we think um, hopefully we'll collect enough money to make a meaningful offset for our fans travel. And frankly, that is the single biggest uh, source of, of our carbon or contributor to our carbon footprint. So it's appropriate that we, we have an initiative there. And lastly, with, the, with respect to the tire change, do you anticipate any difference from a competitive standpoint with the cars will, will drive as well or need to be as durable, the tires rather will be as durable uh, on the new tires, and if if we're satisfied in that regard, why the slow ramp up from the, the usual tires uh, coming up in the month of May to the green tires in Nashville to a date uncertain, if I'm following you right, for making it the standard? Archie, we're uh, very comfortable, and we have done all the validation from a safety, durability uh, a point of view, so we're 100% comfortable. Uh, the logistic of manufacturing, uh, <laughs> bringing the raw material, processing it, ensuring that we have the quality in the manufacturing and quality control in the manufacturing process is the part that we're doing. And we do not, uh, we never rush uh, quality. We do it properly. We introduce it. Actually, a lot of testing is already going uh, on tracks with, with, uh, with drivers. So. We're confident, but we're doing it to be systematic in our approach of quali uh, quality control. To, to oversimplify this a little bit, in terms of the rollout for IndyCar, it's a supply chain issue, making sure that Firestone can supply enough, or am I misunderstanding? Well, I think we take our lead from from Firestone. They, they have to know that they can, they already know that they can supply a tire that will meet our needs and achieve the the, the uh, sustainable objectives that have been set, but we got to know that we'll have a sustainable uh, supply. And once we we start uh, with it as the tire for the whole season, we're going to want to know that that's going to be a, a secure source. Thank you very much. Thank you. We've got one follow up uh, virtually. Let's go back to that. Andrew Rusinoff from Sport Monitor. Go ahead, Andrew. Thank you so much, uh, and congratulations, congratulations, gentlemen, to this uh, initiative. Uh, there is a definite date for an objective similar to the Zero Carbon project launched uh, in a Formula One in 2019. I'm thinking uh, here that, um, for example, the reduce the carbon emissions to zero by 2030. So there is any determined date. And this was one question. And another one is, when conceived this idea of this transformational uh, sustainability initiative? On the, uh, the first part of the question, we chose to, like Firestone, take a, I think, a careful, thoughtful approach. So when we come forward, and we will, maybe by the end of this year, with a clear, measurable objective, zero carbon by blank date, we intend to meet it. So, um, we, by the way, we have had conversation with Formula One, and I, I think we can help each other down this path, and, and we will with other racing series as well. But ultimately, we, I'm sure we'll come up with a measurable goal, um, but we want to make sure that we not only know that we can get there, but on what in what time frames we can get there. So we didn't feel like we had to uh, you know, get ahead of ourselves in, in that regard. Um, where did this come from? You know, a couple things. One, as Nazar already said, it, it really there's no turning back for the world. I think it's clear 
to every part of society that uh, things have to change, things are changing, innovation is a big part of that. Um, and racing can play, uh, I think, an unusual role in, in that regard. So there wasn't any real debate about it. The other thing I would say is, and I'm not a Penske Corp spokesperson, but Roger Penske and Penske Corp and Penske Automotive Group and leasing, for them, this is serious business across their businesses. And you know, there's a, a Penske Corp coordinator that works with all of our organizations that are part of that corporate family on sustainability initiatives. And uh, a great example is the, uh, the e Cascadia truck, which, which trucks, which are here, which come from Penske Truck Leasing, which has them. And when we talk about the, uh, the program for the balance of this year to move our race cars via renewable energy, the folks there who are familiar with renewable diesel. Um, and understand logistics and sourcing have been enormously helpful to us. So it's part of a, a, a broader corporate agenda f for us in particular at Penske Entertainment as well. That gives me the chance to not forget before you, you uh, let us go. I want to thank Logan Waddle who, who came up with a 500 ton uh, number from the back of the room and Lauren Gadotti who must be here somewhere. Two people who've been after this for more than a, a couple years here at Penske Entertainment. They are passionate and they're expert and they are driving us forward. And uh, Logan will be our, our lead in sustainability uh, full time and we can get him out of the ticket office uh, at the end of May. And, uh, and we just want to appreciate the work that you two have done to get us to this point. We will leave it there on a big day for IndyCar and the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and Pinsky Entertainment as well. Uh, we hope you'll join us out on Pagoda Plaza for a video opportunity, photo opportunity as well. Uh, but once again, our thanks to the governor, uh, Nazar. Thank you once again. And to Mark Miles, and thank you all for being here this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.